Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday, November 4th, 2020 special meeting of the Board of Education. Uh, happy Wednesday to everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let's get right to business. Uh, Mr. Rausch, can you please take roll? Yep, President McFarland. Here. Vice President Singer. Here. Secretary Rausch is here. Treasurer Fidel. Here. Member Baker. Here. Member Blazy. Member Lauterbach. We've got six right now. Okay, that's a quorum. We'll we'll move forward with that. Um, okay, uh, we have uh, item two on the agenda. Any requests to address the board? I don't see anybody in the queue, and I'm being told that there are there are none waiting. So. Um, that being said, uh, still no, no requests. We'll move on uh, to why we're here today. Um, we're here for, uh, we have an action item at item 3.1. This is the property and casualty insurance. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Bruton. Thank you, Mr. McFarland, I appreciate that. It is our practice here in Midland Public Schools to bid our property and casualty insurance on a cycle that is traditionally around three to five years. This was year five, so we did put our property and casualty insurance out to bid. And um, we solicited bids and also entertained presentations from the bidders as well, too. After a thorough investigation, um, we are bringing forth to you a recommendation this morning to award the insurance to SETSEG for a total of $214,791 for our coverage year, which, ex which expires on November 17th, 2021. Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, I will take a motion for item 3.1. I move to approve item 3.1 for uh, approval of property and casualty insurance going to set SEG. Support. Uh, motion, motion by Pam, support by Mary. Any discussion? Can you I, uh, un unmute Brad? There. Yep, we'll, we'll do that right now, Megan. On, on the discussion side, Scott, at least from our perspective, um, we we did go back and review uh, per the FFO or um, committee's uh, request to see if SETSAG would look at um, certain segments of their policy breaking out, and they do not do that at all. So it's their pricing is based on the entire piece of it since they're a pool. Yeah, we, we did. We, we really explored that and uh, kind of ran out the the ground ball there, um, trying to find uh, what would be the most advantageous um, package for the district, whether that was breaking it up and, and continuing to utilize the local vendors. We tried to, to use them, but it, it would have just destroyed the set seg package. Um, and, and Brian, can you tell us a little bit about some of the savings that we're going to get uh, with set seg? One of the things that was attractive, I think, to the FFO committee um, was number one the price uh, number two what it included that uh, one of the big things was the cybersecurity um, ransomware I, I think ransom policy that was there in addition to um, all of the ancillary services that come with SETSEG which by the way uh, is a total package that um, a lot of folks mimic uh, so if you could just maybe elaborate on that a little bit I would Appreciate yes, sir. It. Yep, I'd be happy to. Um, you are correct. Um, SETSEG does specialize in schools, so they do bring a lot of extras, um, a risk management program that is going to be advantageous for us. But in terms of savings, the actual premium savings itself is uh, 37225 But what you were talking about is the addition of cyber liability. Um, on one of the vendors' package, um, cyber liability was going to be an extra, an add-on and the set said policy includes cyber liability. So with that inclusion, that changes the difference in the savings of the premium between vendor A and vendor B to just shy of $43,000. So um, another added benefit for Midland Public in choosing this option. And as you all know, cyber liability has become huge. We're probably actually a little behind the ball not having it. Several districts in the state have been held ransom um, through that re recently and have had to pay out. So. And, and this is a policy, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, or Mike, that it is heavily scrutinized by the state and very tightly regulated in terms of financial viability. Um, 
is that correct? So it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fail us. Um, no, one of the things that we did within the committee when we did our interviews with the agencies was also scrutinize their fiscal viability as well, too. And we are um, quite confident in the viability of SETSEG, and we are pretty, very, very, as I said, confident that they'll be around for quite some time and be able to service our needs. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Phil, Mary? I just want to say that um, what was stated was true. That was what was um, attractive was the, the price and the cybersecurity piece. Okay. And I just, I singled out Phil and Mary because they sit on the on the FFO committee. Any other board members are, of course, um, welcome to comment. Uh, any further discussion? Will we be the large district that they insure? That's I don't right. I don't think so, Brad, but I don't know that I have that answer off of it. I know that um, we became attractive to them because we're, we would be one of the larger districts in Midland. So, no, SETSEG's been around since the 70s. It was created by the Michigan Association of School Boards to be a competitor uh, to MESA, which does most of the health insurance in the state of Michigan for educators and the, and other pieces of it. And so um, they, they've done districts throughout the state for a long period of time. They did give us some data on that. Brian, I think Brian's quick looking. Yeah, I'm, I'm flipping through. I don't have it right in front of me, but I would concur with Mike. I would doubt that we're the largest school district, um, but that's something that I can definitely follow up on. Okay. And since we have gone out to them and gotten bids from them many times in the past and they haven't been low, um, obviously what you just said is they are, we became attractive to them. Um, so their price is absolutely a, a great deal for the district. Are we going to requote this again next year to make sure that this is not uh, something that is just uh, they're trying to get our business on year one and then years two and three look differently? Yeah, so we do, typically, Brad, we do um, bid this out at year three or five. So we'll continue to have that discussion with you about rebidding and keeping that competitive. And so, um, but I, I think, um, I, I, I think the other agency that's had us for a long time will be very interested again in bidding for it as well. So I think it benefits us in the long run to, to keep rebidding that, you know, um, policy going out. Um, they may have had been a little bit of disadvantage because their carrier was the one that did get a, few, a couple of our claims, if you recall. And so um, the two claims probably made them at a little disadvantage as well as uh, bidding. And so I think the amount of the savings being almost do my math with me, 15 or 20 percent? 17. 17 percent. So um, it was pretty large and then weighed in our decision a little bit. It was a difficult one because we have had the same carrier for a long time. So, yeah. And then just for a bit of historical reference, Brad, um, I have the sheet in front of me. When we bid last time in 1617, um, Yider and Setseg were um, very close at that time. Yetter's bid was 188996 and set seg was 189429 So very similar bids uh, the last time we did it in 1617. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not hearing any other discussion. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, item 3.2. This is a review of current COVID cases concerning Midland Public Schools. Mike, good morning. Good morning. Um, hopefully you've been following our numbers and what we've been putting out daily out there. And um, we don't have today's numbers, but it'll be a little higher than yesterday, I expect. Uh, presently, we had 14 positive cases associated with us. Um, 214 staff or students were quarantined as close contacts. So that number has grown. Uh, most of it has still been outside exposure, so being exposed in their house or settings outside of the school setting. And, uh, you know, we've had a couple incidences of gatherings um, that have caused issue. We had a recent gathering yesterday that where I really want to talk to you most about is um, we today, we have all of our administrators in classrooms and we're barely able to cover because we have presently 17 staff members um, in close contact. When we have 17 staff members out with a pool now of subs down around in the 50s, we cannot cover that on a daily basis. 
And so um, with that quarantine period of the staff being um, around 10 days for this, the first group and the second group uh, is, is going to expire mid next week, uh, we think it's best that we look at moving one of our schools to full remote so we can actually cover our classrooms um, over the next week, week and a half. The school that seems to be the logical one where the, where the largest number of staff members affect it is Dow High School at this point in time. And so um, I guess I'm looking for your permission to notify the community that um, as of Friday, we would cease face-to-face -face at Dow High, and we would do that for one week. Um, it would be November 6th through November 13th. We'd re return to full face-to-face -face on November 16th. That would allow all our staff to be uh, have met their quarantine period and um, come back in. Now, if we lose staff between then and now, um, we should be able to cover it. It shouldn't be as large of a group as we presently have. And if you look at the, the daily quarantine list, Dow High is also one of the ones that have the most students isolated at this point in time as well. <laughs> Being in one of the larger buildings, that relieves our staffing issues as well versus just an elementary building. Um, and so I think we can get that through us for a week. We're very, very close as well on transportation at this point in time. We have had a few bus drivers in uh, Paris who ride buses be affected, and um, we're very close to being able to not cover our route. So we're pushing it on the staff side. And as I talked to the health department yesterday, this is not because of a spread or an outbreak in our buildings. This is because of simply we're losing staff to be able to cover the classrooms, and most of it's been outside of the district at this point in time. The second part I bring to you today is um, with winter sports coming, <clears throat> a week or two ago the Michigan mm -hmm. High School Athletic Association met, and they deemed that they were going to continue winter sports going forward um, with only the safety protocols that have been put in place at this point in time. Um, we... We're a little bit uncomfortable with that decision by them, and so we requested a, a meeting with our Saginaw Valley League counterparts, and we had that meeting yesterday of either superintendents or their designee ADs um, and building high school building principals in the room. And um, we were pretty split on if we should delay a season or not. It basically was up the northern schools in the league saying we favor a delay, and the southern schools were not in favor of delay. So... We didn't accomplish a lot in that meeting yesterday. We thought a delay of a winter sports might be a good idea. The ADs met afterwards, and our two ADs are going to bring us a proposal about stepped-up protocols in order for us to feel comfortable going forward with winter sports. And, um, you know, right now it says, you know, two spectators per participant. We may look at either none or one to reduce some of that as well and some increased protocols in the actual competition. If you've been to a few of our events that we've had so far, it's difficult to say that 100% of our safety protocols are actually being carried out in the stands. And so it's really part of it is the number of spectators we have and how do we police that is part of the issue as we go forward. So we're going to have to, with these numbers and our statewide numbers and our county numbers going very high, <coughs> we, we have to review a lot of these pieces as we go forward. Um, health department still adamant that our students um, are safer in school. Contract tracing is better when we're in school, and therefore we can isolate and quarantine and protect people. So remember... Isolation quarantine is actually protecting students. Students who've been exposed, we may remove them to protect them from other students, and not, they're not being contagious. We haven't had spreads, uh, uh, multiple spreads going out. And so at this point in time, the health department's recommendation is still that we are in a good position going forward, even with the larger number than we've seen. Um, but it's come down to staffing and covering classrooms. So it's not necessarily an action item, but I just need your blessing and discussion on um, that option. We would send a letter today. We would notify staff that they would need to be ready to go to virtual for one week next week. Okay. Uh, any discussion from the board? Anybody with comments? I guess my... How does that, uh, how does that affect events outside the classroom for Dow High School? <laughs> Great question, Brad. So that's, I think, I think that's the biggest difficulty everyone's having right out there is um, their school's still full remote. They have, come, have not come back to face-to-face -to -face in the state, and yet we continue to do athletics and, and those pieces of it. So when you hear that discussion, and we've had that at many, many levels, 
is there appears to be no spread in those other activities. And so it seems to be the larger numbers getting together in smaller numbers. So we would continue at this point in time with all of our outside activities. Um, fall is wrapping up, as you know, athletically. We haven't fully um, let our clubs and band and choir and performing arts go. They're do some of them are doing in hybrid forms. For example, the drama, they're doing, I think they're filming themselves one time at a, uh, at a time on the stages. And so um, we would go forward, Brad, and then the winter sports is what we're looking in. The, in the next couple of days, we'll probably send you a proposal that shows stepped-up protocols for our winter sports seasons. As, it, as all that moves inside, that's what makes us a little more nervous. So I don't know if I answered you, but we're, it would not <clears throat> affect our outside activities at some point. It would just, it's, remember, this is staffing, so we just would close to school until we get our staff healthy enough to cover everything. Okay. But we do have enough staff so that those students can get, they will be in virtual or they will, how will that operate for those Dow High students? Yeah, so our staff continues teaching unless they're not capable of remotely. So right now, um, I believe I'm saying this right, don't hold me exact, actor. I think all 17 of those staff members are not experiencing some symptoms where they cannot teach. So they would be teaching virtually. Dow High students would get instruction Monday through Friday next week virtually. Would that mimic a regular school day? Now, so if you follow our typical format, the good, the best practices is not to mimic a regular school day. Um, and you know, Penny, jump in if you want here a little bit. But um, so we would follow our typical virtual classrooms and what we're doing on those pieces of it. So a six hours in front of a computer for um, fifty. Six periods for 55 minutes is not actual good practice. And so Penny can speak to this better than I. Good morning. Yeah, in our uh, continuity of learning plan, our remote learning plan, we have devised a schedule that uh, sort of alternates. We will be sure and send that out to the staff again, uh, as well as the students and families. So it is not necessarily every day that every teacher will be with every student but students will have uh, class every day along with some asynchronous or um, on their own time assignments, uh, which is part of why we purchased Canvas and have invested a lot of professional learning time in Canvas. So we will keep learning moving forward the best we can. And I think most of our students uh, and most of our teachers at Dow High are avid users of Canvas. So I'm hoping this will be a fairly seamless transition. So yeah, but remember, well, this shouldn't look like last year's at all because with that purchase of Canvas and training our staff on Canvas, this should be should be should go a little better. Okay, and then and they're going to be a, because of um, they're probably not going to hold testing during this period of time like they normally would uh, in those classes. Did you pick that up, Penny? You cut out just a little bit, Brad. Did you get it? No? I, was your question, will we be holding typical classroom assessments during this yes. period of time? I don't yeah. anticipate that teachers would opt to do that if there are um, just in the course of learning formative assessments that are fairly low stakes. I anticipate that teachers will continue to use the evidence-based practices they use to keep that learning moving forward. Um, we can provide some advisement about chapter or unit tests that might naturally occur during that week and, and uh, promote holding off on those until students return. I think teachers care a lot about students' well-being, and uh, I think for the most part they would mm -hmm. default to not putting students in that situation during remote learning on the short run. Certainly if we have to extend this beyond a week, which it sounds like we, we most likely won't, um, but if we find ourselves in that situation, then we can discuss more secure practices for administering online assessments. Canvas does have some of those features, and Melissa Toner and Dave Dietzik have been really proactive in getting us ready for that. Does okay. that answer your question? Yes, it does. Great. Thank you. Hey, Mike, what about other staff? So paras and then transportation drivers that would be assigned to Dow High? Yeah, so we have a meeting today uh, coming from this one on transportation to determine exactly how does that help us and what do we do there. But right now we are able to cover, it's more the pair, I think, what we heard out of HR today on the bus. So, um, But we are sending you know, our backup certified people 
in transportation. I believe a couple of our mechanics are on the buses. Our director's probably on the bus right now, so we're running pretty thin there as well. And so, and we started thin because uh, many of our bus drivers would be of my age and of the um, at-risk group, and so some of them were not coming back this year and driving, and so um, this would be a problem. I guess what I was asking is non-instruction staff assigned to the building, are they still going to get paid for the next week, and will they have responsibilities? They will, yeah. They'll, they'll assist the teacher the best they can. It is not the same, and they are, are will be paid. Um, okay. And pretty much... I mean, it's a little fuzzier now that some of the governors have been rescinded, but pretty much I think we are required to pay all employees through this venture that we're going through. Okay, thanks. Any other comments? I just think it's very wise to be proactive right away. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think we need to do it at this point, too, and see if we can mitigate um, a little bit of that among staff and get ourselves back to a little more um, full, full horsepower, and that's going to help us going forward. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, great questions, uh, Phil and Brad. And, Lynn, I, I agree with you being proactive here. Um, it is certainly, I think, in the best interest of our staff and our students, and I think the one week of inconvenience um, which I know is going to suck for everybody, uh, is well thought out, well planned for, and it's only a week. Um, and the benefits uh, that we're going to get out of that inconvenience, I think, far outweigh it. So, and Scott, um, on that, that being, on that topic, the se picking a secondary, a high school is, is probably a little less inconvenient than an elementary where they need constant agreed. supervision. Yes, so. absolutely. Um, you guys are doing a great job, kind of patching holes as they come up. I just wanted to just take a second to tell you guys thank you. I, I, I think um, all of the administrators and the teachers and the staff, this is this is just a tremendous team effort to keep our kids in school and keep that option of face-to-face -face viable. Uh, so we are we are fighting the good fight as best we can at this point, and um, I think you guys are doing the right thing. So m maybe the, the the better question for me to ask is: Is there anybody on the board who does not support? Mike's proposition regarding Dow High. Okay, Mike, I think there's your answer. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to work and um, we'll inform you as we process through that today. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, um, Mike, anything else? The, the, the floor was yours. No, that is it for today. Okay, um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I will take a motion to adjourn at this point. Hey, Scott, I had one more thing. Yes, Brad. Mike, is it possible that uh, I do know that the Midland Daily News wrote an article following up on our last meeting saying that uh, the urgency of getting additional people to get in our coffers for substitute teachers. Can I uh, encourage the administration to spend some advertising dollars and to get that out there a little bit more to try to find uh, more substitute teachers? and other people in the things that we're lacking so that um, we can fight like crazy to not have this happen just because of um, staffing issues and, and nothing that's relative to the kids. Can we continue to try to ramp that up and do some advertising? Yes, we will. We, you know, we do it every week in our communique and then we do, do it on job postings. Um, our HR does that, you know, throughout um, the area, but um, we certainly could you know, do something again in Midland Daily News. Um, it would be in partnership with a third-party contractor. So remember, that's a fine line there where there are subs technically, but they are the employees of a third party. So, yes, we can do that. Okay, thank you. Yep. And then one other thing, just to kind of dovetail on Brad's comment, can we direct people on, on our various social media sites to the Midland Public Schools webpage and let them know that we are in dire need of bus drivers and subs? Yeah, I think you can do that. I don't, I don't see a issue there okay. at all. And okay. um, I think I think Mary, we're going to convince Mary to sub again for us too. So, right, Mary? That's awesome, Mary. Yeah, that's true. Okay. All right. So, looking for a motion to adjourn, guys. Motion to adjourn. Support. support. Motion by Phil. Support by Mary. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Have a wonderful Wednesday, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.